Previously, I'm embarking on a fairly ambitious new project. I want to make something amazing, something that you'd be able to base a career on. But I'll need your help. Could take six months to a year of development time, but it will be special and it will be community based. And it's going to be great. Hi, I'm still working on the spectacular sync engine this week. And I wanted to tell you about one of the main contributions that it's going to provide. So I'm, I'm working on a nice and steady MIDI clock receive functionality. And it turns out it's quite a challenging thing to do correctly, especially if you've got an unsteady source, like a piece of hardware or a app that doesn't have a very stable clock. See, when you've got an unsteady source, the samples are jittered all over the place. So you've got a lot of noise in the signal, and your task as a developer is to sift through all of that noise and try and figure out what the original signal is. That's the, you know, the actual tempo. That requires a few things, and there's sort of three major outcomes you want. So given an unsteady source, you want to be able to um, have as stable an output as is possible, as accurate as possible, and you want it to be able to converge to new values quite quickly. Uh, you don't want it to sort of sit there oscillating around for half an hour while you wait for enough samples to come in. So. Um, yeah, there are a few things that you have to kind of do along the way, and I want to talk to you through each of those. So first, I want to show you what a unsteady source looks like. So you're looking at a fairly unsteady source here. The first number is the interval in nanoseconds, and the second is the tempo that we can derive from that. And you can see that it's jumping around pretty much all over the place. If we stop it here, you can see... Oh, hang on. If we stop it, you can see that there are values from you know, 148, 155, 157. It's actually 150. And you can see we're nowhere near that for most of the time. So our first challenge is to smooth that out. And the way, that, way to do that is averaging. So what we do is we collect a certain number of samples. I'm using, I think, 96 samples, which is uh, four beats worth of audio, of, sorry, of MIDI ticks. And then we, we get an average of that a running average over time. And this is what that looks like. So this is the same source with that averaging. And you can see the last field there is the average. Now, if we stop it, you can see that it's much closer to the actual tempo. But you can still see it's kind of oscillating around a bit. Now, if we were to report changes in tempo every time, we would be flooding the application with tempo changes, which is really not acceptable. So we need to find a way to stabilize that more. Now, there are two ways to do that. The first is to increase the size of the averaging buffer. Now, currently, we've got four beats. Maybe we could make it 16 beats. So that would work. But that means it's going to take 16 beats in order to converge. And then if you get a tempo change, it's going to take another 16 beats to slowly move down or up to the new tempo. So it's not a great option, and it doesn't really solve the problem, because even with a nice big averaging buffer, it's really not guaranteed to be completely stable. You might still get a little bit of oscillation here and there. So the second solution is to use rounding, so that um, we figure out uh, what coefficient to round to that gives us the maximum amount of precision that we can manage for the source and still get something stable. So here's how we do that. So we take a uh, certain amount of samples and we remember the range of those over time. So this is um, how we get that. So I'm using a 10 second history and we can have a look at the contents of that while we're running here. So for each second, of the last 10 seconds, we remember the minimum and the maximum values that we saw in that time. So this is, the, this is about 10 seconds ago that we saw this, and then this is the last second that we saw that. So we can use that and then figure out what to round to in order to get both as much precision as we can and as much stability as we can. So if we're trying to make sure that the, the, the output that we get from this input is the same value, we can look through and uh, figure out what precision we can round to. So if we start at as much precision as we can, say we want to round to four decimal places, we can immediately see that if we round into that, it's not stable. We get 8992, 0822 that is. It's, it's not the same. 
So that's not a stable signal. Let's have a look at three decimal places. You can see it's the same. So it'd be 899 or 082. That's not OK. Two decimal places. We'd have um, 90, 08. Again, they're very different. So let's look at one decimal place. That would be 149.9, 150.1. One. OK, it's still not right. So finally, let's look at whole numbers. And you can see that if we round all this to a whole number, that's 150, 150, 150, 150, all the way down is 150. So that, with this particular source, is the maximum we can, um, the maximum precision that we can provide and still be stable. So we have our rounding um, coefficient. We, we round it to a whole number. So given that, um, we now have a way to get a nice and stable source. But it's still not going to converge very quickly because we've got our averaging buffer of uh, four beats, which means that once you change the tempo, it's going to take that long for the buffer to kind of be flushed through with the new tempo samples. And this is what that looks like. So if we start at 150 and we move up to around 200, you can see there we, we start moving up. And then it's, it takes quite a while. Let's just look at that again. So 150 and then moving up to... 200. It's about four bars, sorry, four beats. One, two, three, four, something like that. Now that's because the whole buffer is getting flushed through. Now let's move down again, move to about 76. So we can see we're starting to move, moving down, and then we're at 76. So it takes a bit of time to do that. Now, the way that we get around that is we start looking at the statistics of the incoming samples. So what we can do is if we gather the standard deviation, that's the amount that the samples vary from each other, we can figure out if any samples lie outside of that normal range. Now, that'll happen every now and then in the course of having errors. That's, that's fine. But if we start seeing a lot of them together, we can kind of surmise that there's some new samples coming in and we've got a new tempo. So that's what we do. So we, we look for groups of three outliers. And then once we see that, we flush the buffer straight away. And then we can begin converging to the new tempo much faster. So here's how that looks. You can see in the course of this ordinary data, we've got two outliers here, which is just noise. And we ignore those. And so we head off at 150. Now we're going to move up to 216 BPM. Wait for that to happen. And then we go. And you can see. That was much faster. Let's just go again. So 150, and then new tempo, and then immediately we're at 216. Quite fast. So if we step through that, you'll see it's stable. And then suddenly we get all of these outliers coming up. And then at this point, we have the magic three. Flush the buffers, and immediately we're able to converge much faster. So that lets us converge really quickly to new tempos. So now we can put it all together. The last thing we need to do is make sure that we're not flooding the host application with notifications of a new tempo, particularly if there's not a very big change. So what we do is a couple of things. Firstly, the rounding takes care of minor trivial changes so that we're only going to notify of new tempos if it changes from that point. So that's sorted. Now, when we're doing a converge to a new tempo, or the, the initial tempo, we need to not kind of oscillate a lot back and forth because we're going to, again, flood the app with notifications of a new tempo. So what we can do is we can cap the number of updates we send, like one every half a second, for example. Then there'll only be just a few. Um, it's not going to cause too much trouble. And here's what that looks like. So we start, we connect to the new source. Immediately, we've got the correct tempo. And it's stable until we make a change. Then we just get a couple of notifications. Then it's stable. Then we can make another change. And just a few more until we settle. And it's stable. So that means that you can take kind of almost any source. And as long as it's not a complete basket case, you'll get a stable signal out of it that you can sync to. Um, so yeah, that's what I've been working on. Um, pretty much all from me this week. So thank you for watching, and I'll speak to you in a week. Cheers. Bye. And try and kind of guess from what you see what the actual stuff that's causing that is, um, is giving you. Terrible. Oh, god.